everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J. And today the two of us felt that we needed to talk about the Captain Marvel situation. Last year, Infinity War broke our hearts and we were anxious to see the next movie to find out how all of this was gonna be resolved. But in the meantime, they released a few other movies, including Captain Marvel, and they hyped the movie a lot because they said she was going to be the new face of the MCU, so she'd be an integral part of the story. But when we thought of Carol Danvers, we still saw her as Miss Marvel and not as Captain Marvel because we hadn't really been keeping up with the comics. So the two of us thought we would check out the comics to prepare us for this movie, which would hopefully then prepare us for Endgame. We went with this one because it had a number one on it. Seemed like a pretty good place to start. It did continue the story of other Captain Marvel books, so I suppose it could have not been labeled number one and just been a continuation of those stories if they really wanted to. But I guess it worked because it got us to check it out. But then things got confusing when it turns out there were other Captain Marvel number ones that also happened to be going around at the same time. I saw Captain Marvel number one braver and mightier and I thought, wait a second, am I supposed to be reading this one? Does this have to do with the one we were already reading? It turns out, no, they're actually separate books. A big complaint about American comics is that they can be intimidating for newcomers and people don't know where to start. And it's not hard to see why. This was the first book we saw that said number one, but that was ultimately a coincidence. If we had seen a different number one, then we would have read that instead. I honestly don't see how Marvel expects people to read all of these books, especially given the price tag for them. That money adds up quick, and if these other books are anything like the one we're reading, then they're honestly not worth the money. It's clear that Marvel believes in this character since they have so many books for her and she's supposed to be the new face of the MCU going forward. Forward. But if that's the case, then I really think that they need to look at who this character is and what they want her to be because I don't believe those two things match up. We chose to look into this character because we were led to believe that she was going to be really important in Endgame. And after seeing Endgame, that just wasn't the case. Why would you do that to us, Marvel? Ant-Man and the Wasp ended up being way more relevant, but that movie didn't do as well because I feel like Marvel just didn't push it as much. So many fans saw it more as filler and it didn't do as well at the box office as it could have if they had pushed it the same way they pushed Captain Marvel. On top of that, it just wasn't as strong as other Marvel movies, but neither was Captain Marvel. When we were reading her book, we were worried that some of the problems from that would transfer over to the movie, and unfortunately, it feels like it did. This comic book series was our first introduction to Carol as Captain Marvel, and unfortunately, it wasn't a good first impression, and we really don't want to see more of this. One problem is that she comes off as very conceited and full of herself. I think the writer was trying to make her confident, but it really missed the mark. She has a bad habit of bragging and talking down to people. One example is her interactions with Jennifer Walters in issue 3 of her comic. They're in the middle of a big battle and things aren't looking good for our heroes. She-Hulk comes charging in and it looks like she's gonna change the tides. And Captain Marvel is happy to see her, but she ends up losing her powers right in the middle of this charge, which is something that's been happening to several heroes in this book. Carol manages to save a depowered She-Hulk, but then she starts immediately talking down to her and being very condescending. She calls her a dummy and asks what the hell she was thinking. I know sometimes friends tease each other, but this is a step too far. When Jennifer replies that she was thinking she was the Hulk, Carol tells her about how heroes have been losing their powers, but fortunately, hers are working just fine. Wait to rub it in, Carol. I just don't think that that's the right way to treat a friend. And then she carries her around the battlefield for like three panels, even though she had been struggling earlier when both of her hands were free. And that's why she was eager to accept She-Hulk's help. It makes it feel like all this happened to make Carol look better. And it doesn't really help that a lot of the other characters just end up being Carol's cheerleaders. She's able to get away with a lot because the other characters are constantly heaping praise on her, saying how powerful she is and beautiful, and they never call her out, even when she should be. And it becomes really grating when she keeps pulling stuff like this. Unfortunately, those problems did carry over to her movie. Part of it might have been a weak script, and part of it might have just been Brie Larson's acting. But we did a review on the movie if you want a more in-depth analysis. Basically, this character really needs to be charismatic, but that doesn't come across in Brie Larson's performance or the comic's writing. It was really hard 
to connect with her because it felt like she was so disconnected from everything. Like everything was just an annoyance to her and something she could roll her eyes at. In my opinion, the most memorable scene of the movie was when Maria Rambeau got emotional about Carol because she was going by Veers and she'd forgotten everything. Which is good for Lashana Lynch, but not so good for Brie Larson and Captain Marvel as a character. It was like they didn't really know what they wanted her to be. Sometimes she was snarky, sometimes she was no nonsense, and it's like none of them ended up working. Ultimately, that movie ended up being pretty forgettable, and that's worrying for a character who is supposed to be the new face of the franchise. Meanwhile, she only has roughly 15 minutes of screen time in Endgame, and she spends most of that screen time bragging. We're going to be talking about a few spoilers from Endgame, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, feel free to skip to this point in the video. But in Endgame, it didn't feel like Carol was able to make any connections with the other characters. Coming off of 20 previous Marvel movies, where characters are well established and have strong relationships with each other, it kind of feels like she was just thrown in there. And it's a little awkward. She's supposed to be the strongest Avenger and the new face of the MCU, but she just doesn't click with anybody. For example, towards the beginning of the movie when Nebula and Tony Stark are trapped in space, she saves their ship and brings them back to Earth. But at no point in this scene does she really reach out to them. She doesn't talk to them, not even a greeting. She just tows them back to Earth. She doesn't even introduce herself. A really important part of being a hero is how you interact with people, including the people that you're rescuing. Whether it's something life-saving or something smaller. Like when Spider-Man helped that woman get directions. She appreciated it so much that she bought him a churro. It's a small thing, but it helped to cement that he's the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That's something that was really missing from Carol. When all the Avengers meet up again and they try to form a plan, Carol is immediately going to it's all about her. She says, last time you didn't have me. That was not the right thing to say. That was so rude and uncalled for. When War Machine tells her that they all care about being a hero and asks where she's been, she says that she's been on other worlds, which is fair enough, but that was all off screen, so it doesn't mean much to the audience. And we as the audience desperately need to connect with this character if she's going to be the new face of the MCU, so we need to see her. And we need to see her being a hero. After the five-year time skip, Rocket Raccoon also confronts Carol about her absence from the Avengers. And again, she says she's been busy with other planets. But it just doesn't mean anything to us if we don't actually get to see any of it, or the effect she's had on other people. In other words, don't tell us that she's being a hero, show us. We're shown that she's powerful in both the movies and the comics, but ultimately being powerful is not enough to be a hero. We're worried that they're focusing too much on making her the strongest and not focusing enough on making her an actual hero. I had mostly forgotten that Captain Marvel was even in Endgame by the time the final battle came around. There were so many things that had happened in the movie, and with how much they had hyped her up, I thought that she would have at least gone back in time with them, but instead she showed up to destroy the ship, which was a good thing, but it didn't end up having that emotional impact because she had been mostly absent from the movie, and the interactions that she did have with the other Avengers were largely confrontational. She had been pretty mean throughout the whole movie. During the final battle, Spider-Man gives her the gauntlet, and they kind of talk, but that moment is less her and Peter, and more her and the other female Avengers, because they all show up in this girl power moment, which felt a little bit forced in the middle of this huge battle. That and Captain Marvel just isn't very good with people, so when they all rallied around her, it kind of felt like these weren't friends standing side by side with each other, these were just all the female Avengers. That all happened to be in one place at the same time during this big chaotic battle. Ultimately, we think it would be best to put Carol Danvers aside in the comic books and just take a few years to figure her out, so that way they can come back with stronger stories and a stronger characterization to really flesh her out. Because continuing the way they are is not going to help their company provide quality content for their consumers. And if they are going to use this character to be the face of the MCU going forward, then Larson really needs to step it up in her performance, or else the MCU might want to consider changing course. There's talk that Captain Marvel's comic book is going to be cancelled, which after reading them doesn't surprise us. Captain Marvel being an unlikable main character is just the tip of the iceberg. There's continuity problems between issues and even between panels of the same issue. There's a lot of telling instead of showing things happen off screen that are really important to the story, and the villain is not compelling enough for 
over a multi-issue story. This guy feels like a one-issue filler villain. He's just so one-dimensional. What you see is what you get. They say that a hero is only as strong as their villain, so that's one way to explain why this comic is failing. In our review of the first issue, I actually said that I thought the book would do alright because the movie was being released, but that clearly wasn't the case. The movie did very well at the box office, but we personally believe that a lot of that was because of Endgame. Her movie doing well did not translate to comic sales. Now I'm wondering what's going to happen to all those other Captain Marvel books. Maybe instead of having so many Captain Marvel books, they should just put all of their focus and effort into one book and make a quality product. Maybe then Captain Marvel could stand on her own and she wouldn't need to rely so heavily on Endgame hype. But that's just our opinion. What do you guys think of Captain Marvel? Do you think her character and her stories need improvement? Or do you think they can make it work with the way they've been going? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone!